So last night we saw the Meg 2, the trench, and we're here to talk about it on our new microphones. Yay. So definitely let us know <laughs> how this audio sounds compared to our old ones. As you yeah. can see, we have them clipped right here on our shirts. Yeah. And uh, we'll see how this goes. I am very curious. We just did a little tester, but we'll have to see we'll what see you how guys it think. In a full review. Sure. So, all right. That out of the way, let's talk about the Meg 2, the trench. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be an interesting review because this is one of those rare reviews. I do them here and there for sure. Where my opinion is not going to line up with my review. Okay? Oh, okay. So, did I like it? Yes. <laughs> Would I recommend it? No. <laughs> right? So I that's see. just getting that out of the way right up front. This is this is a really dumb, probably bad movie. It's a bad movie, I guess. That somehow I still enjoyed. And I am glad I went and saw it and I had a good time. But like if I'm being honest, yeah. Do I think the majority of people who watch this will like it? Absolutely not. They won't. They won't like it. Yeah. I guess I understand what you mean, and I agree. It was like a fun movie. Like, we had a good time watching it, but overall, it's not a good movie. And no. it's definitely one that, like, I would have been totally fine never seeing. Like, I wouldn't have felt like I missed out on it. Oh, right. Yeah, you. you know what I mean? I'm glad I saw it. Had Just a good because time with I am it. not a shark fan. No, you're Or not. a shark person, I guess. So, we just reviewed the Meg 1, which Kaylee liked more than she expected. I did. And this one did, is not the same for you. No, it's not. Yeah. Not at all. For a lot of reasons. But I just think it got... I mean, it's not even the silliness that bothers me because I like silly movies. I just felt like there was no substance to it, like, at all. Like, not even in a, in a good, silly way. Yeah. The father-daughter relationship, I feel like, was not explored in ways that it could have been. Um, there's, like, you know, things that are introduced in this that aren't used, like the suits that are introduced that just, like, don't get used the way I thought they were going to and are kind of just for, like, one specific purpose. Yeah. Um, I don't really like that there's more, like... I, I just think that they, they tried to put too many things in it all at once and like nothing got really the focus that it needed on it. The movie the movie definitely tries to go for like um almost like a Godzilla versus King Kong yeah, like feel to it. That's what I times. don't like because I, I feel like it's not set up like that. Like there's another creature that comes out. Are we doing is this spoilers or are we no. okay. So there's another creature that comes in. I won't say what it is, but it's like I just feel like there's no setup for it to be into like the Godzilla versus King Kong thing, but they do try that. Yeah. And it just didn't work for me. I was just kind of like, oh, it would have been like cool if they had set it up as like, this is some rivalry or whatever that's going on. Or like, oh my God, look at all these other like giant creatures and whatnot. <gasps> so there goes one of our lights. Good thing is we oh. don't have a mic like that set up. So. Oh my god! I, I was worried about Grogu because uh -oh. it he was what he's, knocked it over. He's he's the one in trouble. I don't know if that's oh. what you feel bad about. I'm gonna pick it up. <laughs> so as far as the plot synopsis for this film goes, um, you've got the return of a few familiar faces in this. Um, one of them is very furry. I will say that. Yes. Um. And so you've got Jonas from the first film, and he is working with uh, some of the Mono One crew. Uh, his girlfriend from the first movie is absent in this movie. So if you're looking for Bing Bing Lee, she ain't in this movie. Uh, they address that pretty early on. And uh, they, of course, are going to go back down into the trench because I guess they thought that they didn't cause enough mayhem the first time and they didn't get enough people killed. It is funny how in these movies, they don't seem to take any responsibility for the deaths they cause. 
Yeah. By being like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have went down there. And we literally got like hundreds of people killed in the first time around. Let's just go back. I know. And then when it happens again, we'll just blame it on everybody else because we're also not responsible for the ones that are going places that we shouldn't be. Yeah. They don't <laughs> take any responsibility whatsoever. Sure. But so they go down there and, you know, they run into some new troubles. Uh, one of those troubles, of course, being a megalodon or three. Or three. And uh, other monsters. There are multiple different types of new creatures in this that make a pretty big appearance. Mm -hmm. Now, this movie is called Meg to the Trench. So a good amount of this movie is... In the trench. In a trench. Yep. Um, it definitely will remind people who are watching it of the Kristen Stewart film Underwater. Yes. There's that definitely was what I thought of a immediately. decent amount of similarities to it. Like, a lot of there's similarities, a, a lot. especially since they're in the Marianas Trench, and yeah. they literally get in, like, suits underwater and yeah. walk across the floor, and their oxygen is depleting, and yeah. <laughs> one of their masks is, you know, you get the point. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of similarities to that. This is a movie that, like, takes every semblance of logic and completely says, you know what? We're not about that in this film. And we're not going to bother to pretend. Um, There's so many things that they're like, oh, that's just not how that works. This is actually how it works. And you're like, mm, that's not how that works. That's not how that works. I don't care what you say in your, movie, in your movie logic. That ain't how this shit works. So the movie is insanely, insanely silly. It absolutely 100% feels like a big budget sci-fi original like the sci-fi yeah. channel movie yeah it does it's like shark to puss or you know one of those types of movie it really is it's that with a bigger budget and like jason statham yeah it's it wasn't great <laughs> i was i wasn't a fan of the cgi too that's used um when they're like underwater Hmm. There's some moments that I just thought looked really poor and I mean I wasn't like invested and like involved really that much in the story but it that took me out like further where it's like oh man it doesn't even like look cool to me so I was fine with it I was fine with the story and it it actually the first half of the movie is more serious yeah than I was expecting and then it goes completely sideways silly from when they finally get back up on to, like, the shore, the land, uh, out of the water. That's when the movie completely just kicks into a whole different it's, gear of ludicrous. Yeah. And really is ludicrous. like, we are done with the seriousness. Now it's time to have fun. Yeah. Now, this movie is directed by Ben Wheatley who directed, like, Kill List and Free Fire and uh, High Rise and a bunch of different movies. But it, it, it really is wild. It, it reminds me of, like, when, when James Wan was brought in to do the seventh Fast and the Furious movie. And, you know, when certain, like, horror directors who do smaller things are brought on to these, like, completely out-of-left-field type movies for who they are. Like, what? You hired who to do this movie? Because originally, as we know, Eli Roth wanted to do the first one. He wanted to make it R-rated, and he wanted to be the star. He wanted to be Jonas. Uh, it did not go that way. I was uh, informed, as well as Kaylee was, by Cecil from um, The Horror Show, who went and saw this with us, alongside of uh, my buddy Tony Crespo and his girl, Victoria. We all went to this together and Cecil informed us, I wasn't even aware of this, that like the Meg is like this big book series. Yeah, I had with, like, no idea. Six books, a seventh on the way, yeah. and like uh, spin off tie in novels, yeah. like with the Loch Ness monster and all this shit. So it's cool um, that he, he brought that up to us, but he said outright, like, this movie, because the second book is called The Meg to the Trench. Mm -hmm. And he said that, like, Literally, like, nothing, nothing about is, the book yeah. is in here. 
Which, I mean, if you're a fan of the book, I'm sure that's, like, super frustrating for you because you want to see it, like, adapted correctly or at least, like, trying to do it justice. Yeah. But, I yeah, I don't know. There's an additional new character in here mm -hmm. um, who's, like, the chick from the last movie who's not in this movie, her brother, right? Right. He... I liked him quite a bit. I thought he was pretty badass. Yeah, um, I did too. I really liked the relationship between Jonas and the little girl from the first movie, who's like 15 or 14 in this movie. I thought I really liked her, and I really liked their chemistry together, mm. and like the, the dad-daughter relationship. I am a sucker for films like that. So that definitely got me through that that first half that's more serious and and you know maybe it's not the kind of film we expected but it just it felt like a King Kong versus Godzilla it felt like a sci-fi movie and I just vibed with it like I was just like you know what I I don't know I just I accepted what it was <laughs> and I just sat back and 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 was like don't care about the logic don't care about this and that I just want to see wild things happen wild things happened and I just left being like, I had fun. I'm not going to watch it again anytime soon. I'm not like, it's not going to make my top 10. I just sat back and was like, this is fucking ridiculous. And I ended up leaving in a good mood. And everyone else seemed to be bummed out. And I was like, I guess I'm smarter than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> there was a few people in our audience that were like very, oh, very. They were Statham fans. Yeah, they were sure. so into it. Um, which was, it's always fun to be in a crowd where you have like, big fans reacting to something. I really like that. Um, the father-daughter stuff didn't... I, I liked the ending, like the end father-daughter stuff. That was fun. But the serious parts of it wasn't working for me. I don't really know why. I just didn't feel like it was super earned, I guess. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah, it... it, it... It tries to feel like a Jurassic Park movie yeah. to a good amount. Um, it is, it is insanely dumb. Like if you think the first one's dumb, this one is like to the nth degree dumb. So I can't recommend it in good faith. I think most people will be disappointed, but I think there will be a person, like a few people out there, like me, who are just like I accepted it for what it was. I had a good time. And I don't have any intention on watching it again anytime soon. Yeah. That's, I think, the best you're going to get out of this movie is, yeah. like, what I thought of it is, like, probably going to be the best review there is. <laughs> like, not best review, but, like, po the most positive review most I could positive possibly get. positive and, like, like uh, realistic, too. Because I'm not going to say this is a good movie. I'm, I'm not going to say I, I loved it. I'm just going to say it's a bad movie that I enjoyed and I shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it. But I can I can only be honest here. I'm not gonna just downplay the movie because I think I'm gonna look stupid for enjoying it. I do feel stupid for I enjoying mean, no, it. No, it's totally but fine though. Like, I'm okay with it. Yeah. It's, no, you're not stupid for enjoying it. Enjoy what Maybe you enjoy. <laughs> Maybe I am. I'm okay with that. So, anyways, if you guys choose to go see the Meg the Trench, it is in theaters currently, and it will probably be on VOD in like two weeks. So if you want to wait, you should probably wait. But because we have AMC A list, which if you have a chance to get it, please do. It's amazing. It's worth it. Um, you can just jump into the Dolby's or the IMAXs or whatever anytime you want and see a movie. So mm -hmm. uh, this one was basically free to us because we have A list, so didn't cost us any money. I it was a fun enough follow up for me personally and everyone else was disappointed. So that was a bummer when we walked out. The only real bad experience I had going to this movie was like the Debbie Downers when I walked out. They were like this was so dumb. And I was like, yeah, it was. <laughs> like they were like it's so dumb in a negative way and I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so yeah dumb. it was dumb. It was dumb. It was really it was a really bad movie. Yeah. And I enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm so glad. Yeah, whatever. Uh don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> you're probably not gonna have the same experience as me i was i was fine with it so that's that uh statham is statham shocking yeah not shocking no but uh reoccurring faces here they're fine 
Um, but as I said, there there is there is a returning character here. That was one I was most excited about. Who is not human. Best best cast member. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we got to check this audio and let us know what you think. I have a feeling Kaylee's hair. Oh no. Was hitting it. I, I do. Her wig was hitting it. We'll see. Uh, if so, we need to move it over, like to here, so your hair won't hit it. We'll see how it sounds. Yeah, I've been. I was. That's why I've been kind of staring at it because I'm like, oh, I think that, her like, hair is probably hitting. Pinched my. That's all right. All right. <laughs> We're new. <laughs> we'll figure it out. So I hope we get to post this review. I hope Unless so the audio is horrendous, and, and then, then we'll then just redo screwed. it. Ooh. All right. Well, bye. bye.